Welcome to Studio C Plus, the show where you get a peek behind the scenes of Studio C, and the jokes are funnier because we added a plus. With your hosts, Lisa Valentine Clark, and guests Dalton Johnson and Megan Rico. Welcome to Studio C Plus, which is an extended experience of Studio C that costs you, the viewer, only zero and 99 cents. <laughs> Today we have Megan Rico and Dalton Johnson in the writer's room. Okay. All right, well, to start things off, we're going to do a little honey roasting. It's like a regular roast, only a little sweeter. So every time you roast each other, if you make the audience laugh, you get a little ding, okay? No. And whoever gets the most ding a ling a lings wins the sweetest roaster. <laughs> Uh, Megan knows how to skateboard. Hey, Megan, 1985 called. They want you to teach them how to skateboard because you skate really good. <laughs> <laughs> Dalton, you really impressed me with your knowledge of finance and investing. And it's crazy you somehow still aren't rich. <laughs> I feel like mine are a little meaner. <laughs> okay, get ready for this one. Megan is both Cuban and Palestinian. No wonder she's a good cook, because both those places have fantastic cuisines. Ooh, ow, it burns the yeah. roast. <laughs> Dalton, you have such a unique sense of humor. You should try explaining it to me one day. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Megan likes to knit in her spare time. Hey, Megan, newsflash, you knit good. <laughs> I feel that like... That made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dalton, you are gonna make such a great dad. I've been rolling my eyes at your jokes for years. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's... No, that's that's relevant. And so the winner is clearly... Let's just say the name at the same time. Ready? One, two, three... I'm Dal the winner. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> Today we wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the sketches where you have had to really play your inner teenager. So first of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about goths conform. Self-absorbed. Narcissistic. Conformists. Tell me about those costumes. Well, they were cool because they had to be like um, transformable. Like we had to be able to take, take them down in layers and then become like a chipper, happy high schooler. Yeah. So yeah. that was... Which was a little stressful. It was like 10 seconds. It was all the fingernails off and oh, then the yeah. hair and flip the jacket inside out. That was one of those sketches that I was like fine in my mind, but my hands were shaking because I was like, if I don't get these earrings off in time, the whole thing is going to be ruined. <laughs> when you were wearing the costume, though, did you really feel the part? Oh, yeah. I did. Felt kind of insecure. <laughs> Maybe that was before the costume was on, right? but yeah. <laughs> I liked it. I was like, oh, I never, because I never had like a goth phase. My mom was like very uh, controlling about what my hair looked like. Okay. She was one of those like, don't cut it, it's beautiful. But so having like this like grungy black wig, I was like, ooh, I could have been this in high school. So if yeah. you weren't goth, were you a member of a specific clique in high school, both of you? Mm. Um, I, I was really with the, the choir kids in high school. I think that was kind of, that was kind of the clique I was with. Yeah. The, Were the, you the kind of kid that was like, you know, singing scales and Broadway songs down the hall and things like that? I think I was with the choir kids, but I was like, oh, these guys. So too cool <laughs> no, for like, the choir kids. <laughs> <laughs> Just like nice. throwing them under the bus, but still being a choir kid. Yeah. Got it. I was kind of like, um, I was like the guest star in everyone else's clique. <laughs> where I'd like pop in and be like, hey, and I'm like, cool, oh, one joke. This week and then on like, the jocks. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I played basketball, so I like oh, was part of the jocks, but okay. like not real. Like I was, I was popping in and out. I was popping in and out. Just cameos. Cameos. That's school. all I was really comfortable with yeah. at that time. <laughs> this is the real confession. I, everything I thought was cool in high school are things I still think are cool. It's like I saw yeah. like 
a drawing of like a cartoon cool guy. I'm like, what's cool? Leather jackets, <laughs> skateboards. Um, sunglasses. Yeah, sunglasses. <laughs> Snoopy when he's being Joe Cool. <laughs> and I truly have like held on to that forever. And I'm like, if I look like one of the Ramones, I'm doing it right. <laughs> well, so you uh, both clearly got straight A's, but let's see if you really remember anything you were taught. We're gonna put your academic knowledge to the test with a little Academic Quadrathlon. Come on in. Put on your smart jackets, Ooh. please. All right, you're gonna be going up against this team of 10-year-olds. We've got Cohen, Charlie, and Aurora in four academic categories. The categories are geography, history, spelling, and some other stuff. I'll ask questions, buzz in the answer, and the most correct answers wins this very prestigious blue ribbon. Oh. We begin with the category of science. What is the closest star to the Earth? Yes. The sun. Correct. I was gonna say. Very good. I was gonna say Correct. Mercury. <laughs> Moving on to the next category in history, which of these came first? High fives or Spider-Man? High fives. Incorrect. Ah! <laughs> Spider-Man came in 1962. High fives, 1977. Yikes. <laughs> to our next category, math. What is 700 times 80? 56, and then three zeros after it. So 56,000. Correct. I was right. <laughs> Yeah. Moving on to the next category wow. of geography. How many continents are in the world? Yes. Um, seven? Correct. Okay. Nice. That was fast. Nice. Well done. Good job, You just had that locked and loaded. Yeah. Stolen. Hey! <laughs> All right. The 10-year-olds are in the lead. We are moving on to the spelling portion oh boy. of this the is contest. It. This is me. Is it really? Yeah, this is the only thing I know how to do. Spell. Honorable. H O N O R A B L E. Correct. Nice work. The ten-year-olds are our winners. Yay. Well done. <laughs> now everyone has an embarrassing story, or two, or three, from their youth. Even our own very cool Studio C cast. So for this game, I'm gonna read out someone's extremely cringe memory. And Dalton and Megan, you're gonna interrogate other cast members to try to figure out whose memory it is. All right, let's meet our panelists. We've got Jericho. All right. Gabby. Garrett. And Jason. All right, first story. I pepper sprayed myself twice in one day. Uh, Gabby, why did you have the pepper spray? Well, you know, I've always been scared of bears, so I hear the pepper spray helps with that. Okay. Yeah. Jericho, how are these two incidents related? Uh, they were done with the same emotion. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's all I need to know. Yeah. Uh, Garrett, why? Well, the first one was an accident and the second one was on purpose. <laughs> Okay, great. I think I'm gonna say it was Garrett. Incorrect. <laughs> it was Gabby. Yeah. Gabby twice? It was, um, it was an accident. I found an old pepper spray that was cool because it was glow in the dark and I wanted to make sure it still worked. So I like squirted it in the sink and walked away. And then when I came back, it was in the air and I, it was on me. Uh -huh. And then also that was in the bathroom. So then later on when I came back, it was all over my toothbrush and stuff, and I didn't know. So they started brushing my teeth and like, <laughs> yeah. so twice in one day, yeah. Congratulations. It's great. <laughs> all right, our next story is for you, Megan. Mm -hmm. On a date, whilst trying to remain suave, I told a joke and made myself laugh so hard that I spewed food all over my date's food. My date did not <laughs> laugh. There was not a second date. 
Okay. <laughs> Question number one. Jason, what was the joke? Uh, dad jokes. <laughs> I, w I told a dad joke about um, Batman. All right, question number two. Garrett, same question. What was the joke? After doing this, I said it's just an itch, even though it was a booger. Is that an inside joke? Kind of. <laughs> was I covering? Maybe. Okay. Jericho? Yes. What kind of cuisine? Oh, my world. Authentic Italian cuisine. Okay. I don't know why I asked that one. That gave me nothing. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that this was a Garrett. Incorrect. It was Jason, wasn't it? It was Jericho. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> The joke, though, was pretty good. It was, how, how can you use the word statue in a sentence? And I said, hello, hello, is that you? Uh, <laughs> and then you laughed yeah. so hard. So hard. <laughs> was so was so Here is the last story. Okay. I was at a party in my junior year of high school when I ripped my pants really bad. Like, really bad. From the top center all the way down, I was playing Just Dance and my jeans couldn't handle my moves. I drove home almost immediately and I got pulled over by a cop for the first time in my life. Not only could the cop see my ripped pants, but I somehow couldn't find my license and registration. So I started sobbing about how I wasn't ready to go to prison. The cop <laughs> and friend watching, smiley face underwear, very much visible. I don't think the cop thought it was pathetic enough that he somehow let me off with a warning. Don't rip your pants and then roll a stop sign on your way home, kids. <laughs> Dalton, it's your guess. Um, that was my story. <laughs> something else. You know, we've heard a lot of embarrassing, cringe-worthy high school stories from all of you, but you've grown up to be pretty cool people, right? So clearly you figured some things out. So we're going to share that wealth of knowledge with our fans. That's right. It's time to put the C in advice. Let's see our first question. What do I do if a guy asks me for my number, but I don't want to give it to him? Ugh. <laughs> oh, boy. I could write a book. <laughs> okay, here's what we do. If you feel comfortable being honest and you feel like he's not gonna, like, punch you, <laughs> you say, uh, I don't give my number out. Or you're like, I don't know you. Like, sometimes, okay, this Safety. is... Safety. This happened one time on the flight here to shoot this. I was sitting in the airport and I got a notification on my laptop for an airdrop, and it was like, please accept my airdrop, and it said, you cute, can I get your IG or snap? And I was like, I looked around and I said out loud, ew, no, and then I declined <laughs> it. Because <laughs> I didn't know who had sent it, but I knew that I didn't want it. <laughs> yeah. So you can do like a loud, ew, no, or, yeah. <laughs> or you can, if they seem like a kind person and you don't want to like hurt their feelings, which usually is the case, be like, thank you so much, I'm flattered, but I don't give out my number. Perfect. Let's go to our next question. Hey, Studio C, my name's Anne. I'm calling from Nevada, and I was just looking for some advice on how to overcome my Netflix and Disney Plus addiction because I find myself, I get started and I just can't stop. It takes up a lot of my life, and I find myself getting into new shows all the time, and I'm watching one right now. But <laughs> I just want some advice on how to take my life back and start doing normal things again instead of spending all my time watching Disney Plus and Netflix. Okay. Oh, wow. I mean, we live in the golden age of television. Yeah. What's, what is she supposed to do? If it's on your phone or something, like delete the app, make it like, ugh, I have to redownload this if I, if I gotta do it. So you can still do it, but like, do you really wanna go through that? And sometimes you do. And in that case, good for you. Good for you. Like you've earned it. <laughs> like. Also, I don't know, try to pick up some like, um. Some weird, intricate hobbies. Look, that's why I started knitting. Cause like, yeah. we have a lot of downtime on set and I found that my eyes were like burning from just like staring at my screen for 14 hours. So I was like, okay, let's make my eyes burn by staring at tiny little knots. <laughs> yeah. Um, Puzzles. Yeah. Puzzle. You guys heard of them? Those are, <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> 
are almost out of time here, so let's hurry up and get to our peak of the week. This unique peak is when your week was least bleak. My peak of the week this week was when I met a small horse. His name was Cinnamon Sherbert, and we really hit it off. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Ooh, uh, Dalton, if I may speak for both of us. Please do. I would say that our collective peak of the week uh, this week was when we surprised Dalton and made him substitute teach a class full of middle schoolers without knowing that he was gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> really fun for me. Let's roll it. So Dalton, you always talk about how if you weren't on Studio C, you would be a teacher. Before Studio C, I registered to become a substitute teacher <laughs> and I never went because it was too scary to think about doing, so. <laughs> So we have a room full of middle schoolers. Okay. Yeah. This is a lesson plan. Just follow it. Go in there and teach a real class to real middle schoolers. Yep. Great. Good luck. Okay, let's go. Let's, go. let's see how it goes. Good morning. The uh, first thing he has to do is write his name on the board and then give himself a nickname. Mr. Johnson. Johnson. Uh, but you may call me Champ. Champ. God, that was a choice. <laughs> He chose that. So now he's going to uh, take attendance uh. and make a rhyme out of each kid's name. Alexander Hampton. I am sure you've camped in many places. I have a few. Uh, I call in York. York, have you seen Mork and Mindy? No. Cadence Gonzalez. Cadence. Hello. <laughs> Can you go? Oh, caught him. Uh, this, this is, ugh. <sighs> OK, I'm sure you're all here. Okay, lesson of the day. We made this PowerPoint for him. He has no idea what's on it. Everything is Mother Nature's beautiful zoo. The humans are her giraffes, the monkeys, her dolphins, and the angels are her humans. Who wrote this? One, two, three. Mr. Charles John Schultz. Dave. Dave. Oh, Dave. That's kind of complicated. Yeah. You kids, come on. Arrow go down. Bees. Queen bees. They sing the songs of Queen. Bohemian Rhapsody. Mean bees. Boo. Are you a worker bee? Oh, twerker bees. <laughs> ah. Yay! My old friend. He's a twerker bee. <laughs> There's no pizza. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, who wants to do a little experiment? Yeah. Okay, step one. A wedding photo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The matches have been soaked in water, so nothing's gonna happen. Think about that, kids, as we go into our next uh, uh, the thing. So we're gonna learn a little song. We got the mandible. Woo, mandible. Woo, other bones we have. Got the tibia, the little footsies, and elbow. Woo, woo. Mandible. Woo. Got the tibia. Woo. We got the pelvis and the under the pelvis. Stand. Stand. Now, it's time for a volcano. When I say lava, you say yay! Lava! It was weird, I'm not gonna lie. It was an odd, odd thing. The dude was lost. I'm so sad that I nothing went so on fire. That's the only thing. Um, I don't think they're supposed to. Do you feel like you, you've learned anything today? The twerking beast. Uh, would you like him to be your real teacher? Yeah, definitely. Oh, give him a round of applause. <laughs> what was going through your head? Oh, probably nothing at oh, that okay, point. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, well, like, I had to do all the things on that list that I had to, I really not seen before, and like, yeah, in, in that intro thing, it looked like I was fine, but I was 
just like Okay, so for this. all of those things that you had to do, which were a lot, which one was the hardest? Um, well, I really didn't enjoy the gasoline one that wasn't gasoline, <laughs> or the matches that weren't matches, yeah, that as it turns out. that didn't seem very safe. It wasn't very, well, it turned out to be fine. It, it was, was water. water. Uh -oh. And well, then we pre-wet like the matches. Ten minutes on that thing. <laughs> like, I went through every single match. That's why you don't see, like... <laughs> We had like a room full of I really children lost those kids who were just like, oh, come on, dude, even I can light a match. <laughs> That's so funny. Is that really true that you really wanted to be a substitute teacher? Well, no, I didn't want to be a substitute teacher. I don't think anyone like, I think it's a fine profession, but I don't think anyone like is like, I, I don't want to be a teacher. I just want to sub. I mean, you got to shoot for the stars there if you want to be a teacher. Um, I, I do think that substitute teaching is much scarier. Those aren't the kids that, you know. And substitute teaching plus improv is probably the scariest thing I could think of, so. Well, that's it for our show. Thank you so much for watching Studio C+. Thank you so much to our live studio audience and Megan and Dalton for being here. Please follow us on all of the social media channels. Uh, have a good week. And remember, don't be a conformist. Kind of nervous. <laughs> Never met a small horse before. <laughs> always kind of wanted to. Not kind of. I always have really wanted to. Hi. Well, hello, Cinnamon Sherbert. Just having lunch with my gal pal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tickles. <laughs> Cinnamon Sherbert, get over here. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> she is naughty. <laughs>